on the automobile industry's most modern proving grounds. 3,800 acres devoted to automotive research. Construction is still underway, but already by day and by night, new cars and trucks are tested here, tried and proved for performance, economy, and safety. Each part undergoes severe tests in the great engineering laboratories, but that is not enough. The engineers must know what those parts will do when they are combined to make a car or a truck. And so a tract of rugged land was purchased in southern Michigan on US Highway 12 between Jackson and Detroit. This area of nearly 4,000 acres is now a vast outdoor laboratory that is helping to build the good cars of today and the better cars of tomorrow. After the acreage was acquired, the engineers went to work on designing tracks that would duplicate all road surface conditions, concentrated and controlled in one immense area, which is the proving grounds. Building the speed oval and the two straightaways involved the largest earth-moving job ever undertaken by private enterprise in the history of the state of Michigan. Concrete was poured nine inches deep in strips 10 feet wide and 36 miles long. Headquarters for all the thousands of tests conducted at the proving grounds is the huge building that houses offices, a shortwave communication system, and what is most important to the engineers, the garage where test cars are quartered along with the most modern equipment for proving a car's stamina and efficiency. It is nearly two city blocks long, half a block wide. And because the roof is a single span, there are no columns or pillars. Non-glare windows and fluorescent lighting provide unexcelled illumination. And of course, the place is spotless. There are 55 service stalls and a large parts department that stocks all spare parts for cars and trucks that are under test. It is here that the many ingenious testing devices are employed or are installed on the cars to accumulate facts of performance for the information of the always curious engineers. For example, they want to know how much pull must be exerted to turn the steering wheel. So this machine was especially designed and built to measure the effort required. Incidentally, incorporating power steering in the vehicles was a betterment that has been acclaimed by motorists everywhere. This is the visual liner, another valuable apparatus. It checks wheel alignment by spots of light thrown on a chart. The tester makes the necessary adjustments for perfect alignment. Later, when this car returns from its test, the wheels will be rechecked here to make sure they are still correctly aligned. Before an engine is started here in the garage, the exhaust is attached to the underfloor system to carry away the gases. Various testing devices, such as the flow meter and the fifth wheel, are installed on test cars, and now they are ready for the road. A test driver is assigned to each car, and he is told by the project engineer the nature of his project. The electric eye doors fold open, and the cars come wheeling out prepared to challenge the obstacle courses that lie before them out there on the roads and tracks. Understand that what we are to see is routine at the proving grounds. No tests were staged for the camera. This is what goes on hour by hour and day by day the year round. These cars are assigned to the endurance road. 10 miles of gravel, 25 feet wide with punishing hills, sharp turns, rough stretches, and swampy ravines. Last year, the predecessors to these test cars and trucks traveled a total of three million miles, some of it on this proving grounds, and the rest on the most familiar proving grounds of all, the open highways of North America. They traveled all sorts of roads everywhere, in the heat of the desert and the sub-zero cold of the North Country. They encountered sand and mire, salt spray off the sea, and dust storms off the plains, the conditions under which American motorists drive their cars. That has been the practice of the engineering division for three decades, and the test drivers will continue to pile up mileage in Canada, Mexico, and the United States 
to supplement the findings here on the proving grounds. The engineers lifted the face of Mother Nature to provide permanent test conditions. State and county roads are subject to change, but here is a complete testing cycle that is kept the same year after year by maintenance crews and their elaborate road machinery. At this spot on the Endurance Road, they are creating one of three grades. Under construction is a 7% grade half a mile long. The other two are 15%, and a really punishing one of 32%. By subjecting the cars and trucks to these extreme trials, the tester can accelerate the life experience of a vehicle and crowd into months the stresses and strains that the average car would suffer in years. The trucks that work on this project are not only doing their job, and a tough job too, but they are also under test, like the other vehicles elsewhere on the grounds. There are many controlled hazards contrived by the heartless engineers a Belgian block road for particularly rough going, an asphalt run and a brick run, a sand pit, a mud pit, and a water trough. Each of the tests has, of course, a scientific reason. The runs through the water are for the purpose of determining whether there is any fault in the ceiling of the body, the brakes, the floorboards, and other parts. Just watch this. There are straightaway roads 24 feet wide, two and one quarter miles long. At each end of each straightaway is an 80 foot turnaround. A project engineer gives each driver his instructions on his next run over the strip. They record engine and transmission performance from cold starts. They note acceleration rates. And again, they are working on the all-important problem of economy. In a car with a fifth wheel, an observer sits beside the driver, recording all data for further study. Cars that speed to this sign must stop, or they might run off the end of the strip. This is also a braking test. At one end of the north-south straightaway is this turnaround pad, an 80-foot circle used for cornering tests, stall speed, and creep speeds. Now and then, a tire fails under this punishment, but for the test drivers, radio telephones are always handy to let the garage know what has happened. And an emergency car, equipped with radio, is dispatched to the turnaround to change a tire. The cars stop before crossing straightaways where traffic moves fast and in both directions. They stop again before entering the speed oval where traffic moves only counterclockwise but often at speeds up to 100 miles an hour. It is easier to visualize how steeply the curves of the speed oval are banked. If you put a car in this unusual position, astride the track, the curves are so accurately constructed that cars can round them with no hands on the wheel. Vehicles are driven at higher speeds than the public drives so the engineers can be sure that every part will stand up under such extraordinary conditions. It is scientifically necessary for some testing to be done at excessive speeds. For example, a propeller shaft that is ever so slightly out of balance is more likely to show up at speeds over 60 miles an hour. Here on the proving grounds, speeds can be controlled, which would be impossible on public highways because of traffic. This is no race track for the drivers. Each one is assigned to a certain lane, which he travels at a determined speed. And so it goes, around and around and around. Nor does the end of the day mean the end of the testing, because nightfall is the signal for another crew to take over and continue the routine around the clock.
On and on they go, sometimes under a clear and starry sky, sometimes through rain and snow, on and on. And now it is another day, and still it goes on. What is the reason for all this effort, all this vast expenditure of engineering brains and time and money? It is to make this the newest proving grounds for testing automotive products, a scientific instrument. For the thousands of acres constitute just another machine for proving vehicles. The objective? To reduce the initial cost, to bring about greater economy of gasoline and oil, to provide increased safety, to enhance the comfort that the cars afford, to provide years of carefree motoring. All this is for the men and women who own the cars and drive them. These are the people for whom the engineers are working to make the fine cars of today always better and safer and more satisfying in the years to come. There's beauty in those flashing cars. There's strength and stability tried time and again over the tortuous tracks and roads. is where automobile performance is tested and proved the hard way, the sure way, on the world's most modern proving grounds.